Efra Ajitito Unambikano, based in London, has called for the killing of Nigerian soldiers. Take a listen. The protest is every day for the next three weeks. Every blessed day for the next three weeks. And you people must devise a strategy to outwit the army. As I said before, the army will face in one direction. There are some guns in Edo State right now as we speak. Use those guns to kill one or two or three army officers. Take their guns from them and from them and begin to kill the and begin to kill the others. Anyone you kill, you take the guns and you start you, you kill other people as well. That's how it's going to be. Because they cannot sustain this fight for three weeks. Uh, before three weeks, if they continue to move their troops down, Boko Haram will overrun them off. Yes, and they understand they are very stupid. Yes, you know that Janja with they are very daft. Okay. Unless they are the ones sponsoring Boko Haram. Yes, there are guns in Edo State already. Yes, kill the army. Wherever you see them, kill one. In a separate incident, some evils are dissociating themselves from the activities of Unabdikano and the ESM. Take a listen to tell ourselves the truth and at times that truth can be very bitter i'm sure we were i'm sure we all saw when namdekano said he had uh, created the eastern security network i'm sure you saw when that eastern security network began to move around because he was making daily broadcasts and telling them what to do I'm sure you saw the videos where they said they were killing soldiers and killing policemen, and he was making daily brokers, urging them to go and kill more. Destroy them, don't let them escape. He even imposed a curfew in Anambra and other places. Say, look, just go shut down anybody you see, kill them. The whole world was listening. Then they killed, they actually killed a whole number of, you know, they made videos, and it's not being made up. They made videos at a time, at a time the global, the world powers were already dealing with our, our situation. Dealing with, is anybody being killed in Yoruba land now for insisting that they are fed up with Nigeria? No, nobody's even been detained. But you, you decide to go your own way in, in, in going to say, okay, we will charge you out just because he wants to pretend he's the one that uh, defeated Nigeria. In a, in a Biafra that is not defined. And it is that scam, the desperation to make money from the blood of dying people that led to that show, that show, that window show of we are doing so much at home. I'm sure we saw many videos and pictures of the pretense that they were dealing, that he was dealing with uh, the government of the United States and several other institutions across the world. We are in May, we are in May of 2021. I can report to us now that no, no single official of the United States government have ever been in any meeting with uh, Nandekano and his IPOB and the Biafra commotion. Not one, not in Congress, not in the executive branch, not at the UN, not at the EU. Everything you hear, everything you saw is Photoshop. In fact, the people that are dealing with us in Washington, and I'm sure you, when you go to the, to the website we gave you, you are going to see the videos of what we did in Washington that became these policies you are seeing now. The people dealing with us, the, the, the officials dealing with us in Washington actually said to me in January of 2019 that they had verified we had nothing to do with that scam. Before they opened up their national security architecture for the discussions that had led to the decisions. You saw when they categorized Nigeria as state sponsor of terror, putting Nigeria as country of particular concern along with Iran for the involvement of people in government in the terror that was uh, you know, spreading all over the place. So. I'm informing you that it is because they were making a show of, of killing policemen and soldiers. Then they say it's unknown gunmen. Then the people who have been looking for how to kill our people also join them in becoming unknown gunmen. That's what's going on in the place. We saw all of what 
happened before then. In 2017, the Python dance, there was the same thing. They put up video, Biafra Security Service. You saw them in uniform holding parade. And then he was telling our people that he was going to go to Abuja and behead Buhari and bring home to them. And they were clapping. And then the operation was launched to stop them because these people were already wearing uniform and making, well, how can you be making a show exposing more than 70 million people to danger because you want to make money and make fame? He's not involved in what we are doing. Everything he's doing is causing setback for the, we will have finished with this whole liberation project. If not for the criminality of people who come to say you want to restore Biafra, that includes Ijolan, Ogoniland, Ibibio land, you've not talked to them, Urobo land. You sit in London and say you want to restore Biafra. What does that mean? You don't have a map to it. You don't have any discussion you've had with the people. Everything we have done was being destroyed. Yoruba was being denigrated 24 hours. Milubet was being denigrated 24 hours. Everything we did to get into reason, to stop, he refused. Now look at his, how much blood is costing. Why are those same people not killing other people in other places? Nobody's in support of people being killed. It's the same people who are struggling to save from this. But how are you going to explain in Washington, in Washington, the day of that Operation Python dance? I went in to say, see what's going on. They threw a video at me of what led to the oppression. And the fellow, he wasn't there on the day of that, on the day of that killing, on that day that that house was invaded. None of the did not sleep in that house. I can report to you. Not only were the people in the compound who thought he was there, the 28 people who thought he was there killed. There were more than 300 other people that were killed that same day. The radio in London was busy broadcasting, knowing fully whether he was nowhere near that town. They were broadcasting for people to go and defend their master. And people closed their shops in Onitsha, in Abai, in other places, heading to my head to go and defend their master. The soldiers had their orders to commandeer those buses and execute the people. And that was what happened. More than 300 people were killed because somebody's playing pranks presenting us as stupid people all over the world. And some of our people who live in the diaspora are busy contributing money for how he can come and make a show of, uh, of uh, killing policemen and soldiers. Why are Yoruba people not killing policemen and soldiers on the street of Ibadan? You want, in the, you, want, you, want, you, want, you want liberation. Which diplomat is going to be discussing with you? Nandekanu is a fraud and a scam, and all he's hoping to see is that when people are killed in such large numbers, that the international community will come and, and swear him in as a president of Biafra. He's not involved in the, this strenuous effort to liberate the peoples of the territory. He's the biggest setback to what we're doing on all sides, at home and abroad. All the alliances, the people who already agreed with us, you saw when Asari began to disown him openly. You saw the Urobo disowning him. You saw Obaiseke and this Midwest movement. These are all people who have embraced the Lower Niger Congress. And you declare yourself supreme leader. All the people doing that, that scam with him, Igbo. You said Chuko Abiyama. How does that sound in the ear of the Ijo? I have sent a message to him because He's not a stranger. There's nothing I'm saying here now that has not been discussed one million times in private. Before he began the broadcast, it turned out that one of our elders who was a, 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 in the military had invited him to come to sit down to know what we're doing so that we can put that radio to some kind of you know, use. He came home, sat down with me for four hours. I gave him all the documents of this process. There were eight points of strategy in which you know, we said to him, this is what we're going to do step by step that will become that freedom. We must have a definite map of the territory. He said, everybody knows where Biafra is. 
What was the controversy in 1967? Have you discussed with the Joe and the Ogoni now? Because that's what the UN will ask you. Where's your map? Have you talked with them? He said no, that those people don't understand what we are saying. What is your answer to the constitution that, that, that tie us to that situation? He said we're still discussing Nigeria constitution, it's Biafra he wants. Have you discussed with those who were in alliance against you in 1967? If something goes wrong now, Nigeria is still selling the three million barrels of crude away from, from lower Niger. The, the Fulani can still find a way to rally everybody against you. What is your plan about that? Say, oh no, don't uh, talk about Yoruba will disappoint you every day. Uh, middle belt uh, uh, were the ones who killed us. Uh, as if nobody has ever, ever, uh, ever knew about all these things. With all the kind of people who are involved in the process that became this plan. He rejected every one of those, even the question of referendum. He said that, he said to me in that meeting, that if anybody talks about referendum, they will kill that person. I said to him, here is evidence of what we have done at the UN. This was 2013. Here's the evidence of what we have done at the UN. That that referendum is not for Nigeria to conduct. It will be a UN Security, mandated, UN Security Council mandated referendum. He, he said, no, no, let nobody talk about referendum. What is the landing? What, how, how will you deal with the international community in this matter? He said, when they conquer, what is the mechanism for, for dealing with the existing governance structure? Are you going to beat up the governors? He was hoping that. With brokers, people are going to pour out to the street and the governors will run away. We saw it in 2015. What, how did it end? So I'm just saying to us that this whole shenanigan of uh, Biafra restoration, anybody who is dealing with it as part of how to succeed in this thing is in grave error. We are marching on to the, the, the terminal point of what we set out to do. That constitution will go down, people will vote in a self-determination referendum, and nobody's going to be able to shoot at anybody. But if you go and make video of killing soldiers, and they come back for you, they're going to enjoy a lot of innocent people. Thank Put you. your ears to the ground to hear what's going on in the East. The head of the market woman calls on President Mohamed Buhari to address Nigerians on insecurity and steps taken. Good morning, Baba Buhari. My name is Oluwato Ibadmos. I'm a Yaloja and a Yalodi of Abuja. I'm your fan. I've been your fan since 1984 85. I've been campaigning for you since 2015. In fact, in 2019, I campaigned for you in front of Wuse Market. At the campaign ground in Wuse Market, General Amarua was there. Then one retired IG of police, I think his name is Abai, was there. But by this killing is getting too much. Like I said, I'm your avid supporter. This is not about opposition. This killing that is going on around the country, this kidnapping, Baba, please talk to us. Address us. We want to hear from you. We, want, we don't want to be hearing from Sheo Garuba. It's you that you want to hear from. Give us assurance that everything will be okay. We are afraid to come out of our house. Last week we heard that one of the members of APC was killed on his way to the airport. That was a good luck in Imo State. Today now we are hearing rumors. I pray to God that it is not true. That they have killed the DG of uh, the DG of, uh, what is the name of this parasata? Of Neko. Our children, they will go to school, they will kidnap them. But, but talk to us now. Please. Talk to us. Come on national television. Address us. Talk to your people. We want to hear from you. We want to know the situation. I'm begging you. I'm, be I'm begging you on behalf of all the women in Nigeria. We are tired. I am begging you, please come out and talk to us. Come and address us. This is getting too much. I'm over 60 years old. I was not too young when the last civil war started in Nigeria. My mother has to pack all of us and go and hide us, hide us in our hometown in the 60s. 
Papa, please address us now. Talk to us now. This The way you are keeping quiet is not good. Stop sending people to go and talk to us. Stop sending any school person to talk to us. We want to hear from you. We are your children. We voted for you. I voted for you and I don't regret voting for you. But please, Baba, we want to hear from you. This killing is getting too much. We don't feel safe anymore. We want to know what the problem is. Baba, please, I'm, I want to talk to you, but since I don't have the access to get to you, I pray and I hope that this video will get to you. This is getting too much, Baba, please. Come outside and talk to us. We are tired of you keeping quiet, please. During the campaign, you, you talk to us. We want you to come outside and talk to us. I'm begging of all, on behalf of all the women in Nigeria. We are tired.